Welcome to Your OC Sucks, the weekly podcast where we review and critique the best and the worst fan-created original characters from the My Little Pony fan. This show is unscripted and unfiltered, so moderate language will be used. As well, this show can be a little heavy on the critique at times. That being said, if you were easily offended, don't watch. If not, feel free to join us for this week's show. This is episode 32 for October 10th, 2014. This week, we have to show some bat ponies that hit a grand slam, and some that have three strikes and they're out. But in the meantime, let's slide into home with this week's show. My name is Bonafide Thunderbirds, I'm the host and show manager. I am joined by... Commander Sparkle, Assistant Project Manager. I'm Eddie Bobo, I'm in charge of gathering questions and viewer interaction. And I'm Smooth Sailing, and I'm the editor. Fan art this week! I'm done. That's a way to introduce everything. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. We're just gonna go right into it. Just, uh, just throwing us into it. Um, we got, we got... You got a lot of fan art. I got a lot of fan art. <laughs> like I got a lot of fan art. Again, yeah. this week, you say we, but really, it's all you and Medi. Well, really, I mean mummified and smooth. I mean, come on, guys. Stop ranking so much fan art. Seriously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we kind of are now feeling like the full wave of all of the fan art that was made for both Commander and Medi for their birthdays. Yep, yep, yep. Well, uh, like, there was one piece of fan art, um, that was, like, a, co- like a collaboration between Ali Flandor and Kiki Oyaoi that was, uh, shown to us, you know, about 30 to 45 minutes into recording, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't get to talk about it, but it was a piece for me for my birthday, and, like, Kikyo's, uh, OC, uh, Midnight is like br- like has a gift for me and it's a dress and it's really fucking cute like goddamn dress is adorable if i had to pick a favorite this week and this is terrible because with all the fan art we got this week was awesome and amazing and i loved all of them but congrats meddy it's got to be my favorite piece of fan art i've seen in a long time it's so fucking adorable it's fucking cute oh my yeah, god yeah i'm really jealous of that one like i'm pretty jelly God, you turned my ugly mug into an adorable face. <laughs> it's really cute, and though. Little touch pads, just adorable. <laughs> He's like plushy size. Super cute. He's cute as fuck. I really like uh, the fact that Inahoshi the Dark Pen put up uh, little doodles of us. I, oh my I, god. They're, it's so great just because of how expression mystic it is it's just like expressive expressive that's it that's the word i'm looking that's for that's a word that is a word that i meant to say uh it's so expressive in like all the different things like even my little <laughs> <laughs> and we're all just like let's just uh let's just get the fuck away oh, he's scary i like how touchpad puts his glasses above his horn when he falls asleep oh yeah that is nifty. Fall off his face Pretty nifty. Even though I'm a restless sleeper, and I would probably just fucking... It wouldn't work. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Really... Also, the happy birthday piece with me and Commander's OC and a scarf together with a birthday piece of cake. It's so cute. cute. It's so cute. Like, oh, my God. So adorable. Like... Then I had another one where I partied hard with, uh, with Sand Tombs OC. We had a scarf party that seemed to be taking place in the dimension of Rave. In the dimension of Rave. <laughs> yes. Also, we all got Christmas theme. Come on, guys. It's not even Halloween yeah, yet. Yeah, seriously. We're all getting ready for the Skeleton War. Let's do this. We all have cute little Christmas names like Cold Sailing. Medi Xmas. Cold Sailing. Winter Sparkle. And uh, Momified Blizzard. Momified Blizzard. <laughs> You just look angry. It's the stash. It makes everything look angry. Like, we all look like we're having different emotions about winter. Oh, I don't know. Benny X, Missy. Oh, I'm sorry. I love you or anything. I don't like Christmas or anything. Smooth's like, I like Christmas. Me. You're just like, fucking snow (laughs) everywhere. (laughs) Nice. I am mummified. It seems you have uh, fallen asleep in your uh, in your little shop sewing something. Uh, it's, it's it's hard life. I mean, it's just like oh, 
gotta work all the time. Well, guess what? Not much time for sleep. Just gotta. I mean, it's uh, it's it's almost all like work. you're taking a cute nap. That doesn't look too manly, right there. <laughs> Naps are manly as hell. Okay. No. <laughs> if that's everything. Uh, Medi's birthday, Commander's birthday, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, we talk, uh, like we said in the intro, that we're gonna be doing Bat Ponies this week. Uh, Die Fate says that I get to go first this week. So, I brought in Arrhythmia. Uh, she is, um, roughly, uh, the young adult's age, and she is, I'm not gonna lie, kind of cute not in like the smooth way where he's like isn't she it's really cute she's kind of like oh my oh she's got a little flustered there Ooh. mummified the english language has a lot of words for a lot of different reasons this doesn't fall under cute she is there are other words to describe it she's a saucy use one. use your words saucy like, this this is a good, like, reference sheet of, like, all, like, the different angles and whatnot, and the different ways that you can present an OC. I mean, yeah, it's a red and black one, but it's not red, black, and white, so you don't have contrast between it. The reds in it are nicely, uh, nice and soft. Even the blacks are nice and soft. The socks are, I mean, an accessory that I don't ever really get, but then again, she's also wearing a sock, so maybe, I don't know. Anyway, uh, but it's just, like, all the colors in this work really well, because... None of them are a pure black or a pure red. Even uh, her coat is kind of this, like, I don't know, like, like, like light, light purple? It seems like how I would imagine a pony succubus would look. Mm, I agree, yeah. I could probably dig that. Um, actually, also, yeah. I love her scratching her ear with her wing. Oh, it's so cool. She's like, mm, feels so good. I also like the fact that she's got, like, little hooks or little... Like, a little notch on the top of her wing. I mean, a lot of Bat Pony OCs don't have that, or don't take time to show that off. But due to the person's art style, uh, Mata Knight's art style, uh, it's very interesting and fun. Based on aesthetics alone, I seem to en- I, I enjoy this OC. It's not, like, like super st- like uh, stellar amazing for me, but I think that it has, like, a lot of potential. I think that, like, the, I mean, the art is definitely very, it helps a lot because it shows a lot of, like, ranging, like, facial expressions and emotions and just fun little stuff. Like, the ear scratching one is really cute. <laughs> Dude, she's an emotion manipulator. Yeah. That's cool. It's great because she's able to, since she is a bat pony, uh, it's believed that she can, like, sense people's heartbeats a little bit more. Uh, and she's able to adjust uh, people's, like, heart rhythms with like screeches which i find that kind of interesting like if i ever actually saw it like executed it'd be like oh man i don't i don't know if i can make it out on stage i mean all those people looking at me eh! oh my god i can totally do it now or something i don't know it, it's just kind of interesting no then you're just like oh great now i just got a boner and i'm nervous still <laughs> <laughs> i am now more nervous because everyone's going to see my boner. Just st- just stand behind the podium. You're, you're going to be okay. But yeah, I like uh, how this character, who is an emotion manipulator, in a way, uh, she seems to be sexualized. Highly. Yeah! I, I don't notice that at all. No, not at all. No, so, not at all. Especially I not mean, the bottom left picture. Nope. Especially since uh, one of the first pictures you see is just a straight-up ass shot. <laughs> yeah. And the one right below it, basically an ass shot. Mom's does like the booty. Okay, there's a lot of sexualization in this OC, but uh, it still <laughs> has a bunch of goofy shit in there, like her scratching her ear, making a very not so appealing face, but it's still adorable. It's like, oh god, right there, yeah. That part that you just can't get with hooves. I really like her man and tail. They're full and they look very fluffy. Not a big fan of the colors altogether, but she looks huggable. Yeah, she does. Yeah, um, in terms of colors, I think the thing that throws me for the loop the most, because it just, like, clashes a bit, is the scarf. I love scarves, but I just, 
Like, yeah, you do want your accessories to pop a bit, but I feel like it's popping too much because it just contrasts, like, more than I, I would it like. And I think that you'd want to pull... I mean, it's really hard to pull colors from this OC without them being white, red, or black because that's pretty much the only colors. And I think I feel that they were trying to go for something that wasn't one of those colors... But I'm not sure if the, like, yellow really works too well, at least in my opinion. What if they did a maybe green and white, like a contrast? Would that be too much? I mean, maybe depending on the green. Because that could either look really cool or awful. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes green and red just, like, they are contrasting colors, which are supposed to look nice, but they can... Too much is too much, for sure. Yeah. those colors. I don't know. I like it just because it all brings a warm feel to it, but I don't know how to improve. I mean, it's kind of an interesting talent having a, uh, a, a talent be reading people's heartbeats and then using screeches to, like change people's emotions i mean i don't think Does that mean that she's a good heckler or a bad heckler uh i guess her she uses her powers for good so she's a efficient heckler if she was a heckler i guess i don't know and uh she got her cutie mark from helping her friend yeah um her and her friend sunspring were in the everfree forest and they got trapped by some timber wolves and um, Arrhythmia let out a, like, huge screech at, that, uh, like, caused the, uh, like, the, the Timberwolves to, uh, sort of cover their ears because it was ridiculously loud, and, um, normally, like, like, Sunspring would have just pretty much been stood, like, stood there, like, in fear because, you know, you got a bunch of Timberwolves, they, like, cornered them, so it was kind of like, oh shit, uh, what do we do? But apparently, um, Arrhythmia's uh, uh, screech uh, actually, like, made her heart beat faster, which I still, that's something where it's like, I'm not sure, I feel like heart beating slower would be better, personally, because usually that or means you're calmer, just... and you're able to think through things. When your heart's beating really fast, you're usually, like, less focused. At least that's does heart Does heart rate play into adrenaline i mean it does it would also pl can play into stuff like anxiety and, st and stuff which when you're in a stressful situation that i mean it, you could go either way but um, so yeah i would specify on that maybe like she can cause different like with her increase she knows how to increase blood specific or heart rate enough to cause maybe an adrenaline rush or a, instead of an adrenaline rush maybe like you said uh I, anxiety well, like I, I just control well, yeah I, I feel that it may be in this situation um like like because it talks about how uh pretty much like after that um uh, sunspring had gotten courage to help like fend off the timber wolves enough to uh help have them like get free from them and escape the everfree forest and then she told um arithmia that it was the screech that gave her courage and then she, um, real, like, like, after that, that's when she got her cutie mark. Um, I think, it, cause, I'm not sure, how, like, I feel that you could go either way on that, cause either it gave, it pumped up her heartbeat and she was just, like, had a ton of energy, though I personally think, feel that it would be, like, you should get more courage cause she was able to think more calmly, but that's my opinion. Anyway, uh, I think it's pretty neat. I think it's pretty cool. So, uh, we're going to move on to the next OC, which is a two, so that means commanders. So this is Nocturnal Flux. They're, they say age 18, so I am just going to assume sort of young adults coming of age, age because, I mean, I'm assuming it's like trying to translate in, uh, so for our understanding of human years, um, Anyways, she's a bat pony, obviously. Uh, she says she's a student, but I'm going to get into why I'm a little bit confused on that. Um, 
uh, her cutie mark is a purple vortex, and apparently she was born with an innate ability to sort of sense shifts in space and time and predict the opening of dimensional rifts, which, from what I've read, it sounds more like, like, can, like, feel when, like, teleportation is going on, specifically. So she's so she's a like sort of sweet sweet nature generally, but is a little can be a little bit spacey, but uh, and later in life she gets to be a little bit more uh, saucy and a little seductive like the uh, last pony, and uh, she like among her whole sensing teleportation stuff, she uh, is good at sort of drawing and writing and like has a, a bit of a creative side. And uh, that's pretty much it for that. Now, I'm going to try and speed through this background as best I can. So, basically, um, she was born in, as a, uh, like, her, she was born to a, like, Canterlot night guard and a uh, nurse who worked mostly night shifts and um, lived, like, in a small town outside of, or, uh, like, you know, a small home in a residential part of, outside of the castle. And things were going pretty good, and she was, instead of, since she's a bat pony, instead of being schooled like normal, uh, she went, went with, uh, quote-unquote, more traditional um, schooling for bat ponies, because they don't have, or since they're nocturnal, they, uh, she got night, uh, homeschooled. And things were going pretty good, um, and she was, she was like, really enamored. She, like, learned to read, was enamored with stories, started to draw and write and stuff. But then things started going to shit. <laughs> Her grandparents both died. Her dad got called into military duty and was never seen again. Her mom got fired and they had to um, move to um, a sort of like shittier district of Manhattan. And that's where things just sort of became not so good. So pretty much after that, her brother and like sort of like got into sort of gang life. And because she, her brother was a little bit older, she sort of looked up to him and sort of adopted that too and became in that circle and met some like like good friends but sort of their influence their like bad uh influences sort of got her to start using a lot of foul language being a bit of a rebel dressing like scantily uh she lost a lot of her manners and would start to act saucy like i said and then like but she would still maintained a lot of her general demeanor of being like a nice pony and uh, as she grew older, she uh, was uh, one of the more attractive mares in the circle of gains, and, like, all the stallions really wanted her, but she was pretty much like, eh, I don't need you. Until, well, one of her friend's brothers moved to town, and he pretty much was, like, one of those, like, gang leaders, and he's like, uh, you, you're mine. And treated her like shit, and stuff like that. Uh, pretty, like, wouldn't let her do things that she wanted to, only could go places that when he was going there, and was sort of, uh, pretty possessive and a bit of an ass. But pretty much, uh, like, at one point in time, she sort of got a uh, bad feeling about things, got, like, like, walked out of a club and got encountered by two gang members who pretty much just, like, grabbed her and tied her wings and pulled her into an alley. And then uh, Mag, who was the guy who pretty much said, you're mine, like, I guess I, I, it's not exactly explained what uh, like he was going to do, but I'm assuming it was not something very good or uh, uh, child-friendly. <laughs> but anyways, then uh, Flux's uh, like, sense of, uh, like, I can tell that something's going to teleport or something's going to happen like that, uh, happened and a like i guess an entity like or like a really strong entity i believe is how it was described uh came up and uh like threw uh the, the guy back and all of them and and pretty much after after that she like pretty much ran away and like it was like feeling pretty shitty uh, like sort of like was talking of a, like a spoken apology towards like her mother, grandparents and all of them for like how she let her life get out of control and be surrounded with bad influences. And then pretty much was never seen again. So I, I think that the story for this character, like especially like it helps reading the whole thing is like rather enthralling. And there are a couple points that I was sort of like, this seems a bit edgy, but I I liked it. I th I found it interesting. I sort of I I digged the whole the kind of goth aspect of the character. My biggest complaint is the cutie mark. I just sort of 
I wish that there was a, they, it was done either a little bit differently or just changed. That's the only problem. I, that's the main problem I have with the OC. You guys want to speak on any of this so far? Uh, I like her accessories. They definitely fit what the personality is described as. Kind of like she looks like a teen rebel, like you said. Yeah. Oh, and that sock, that little, um, like, leg warmer sock thing, that was uh, what, a memento she's been keeping that her grandparents made for her. Okay. It's interesting, and it's deep, but, I, I don't know, it's just something about it just doesn't feel right. I I think it's a lot better if you read the whole backstory. I, I had to kind of rush through it. Like, there's, there's a pretty solid chunk of information I tried to go through as fast as I could. Yeah. And I I feel like um the one, the bottom left one, sort of might signify maybe the peak of that, that like, period when she was very, like, uh, sort of, like, saucy and in that uh, lifestyle of, like being surrounded with a bunch of bad influences and gains in Manhattan and stuff like that. Because the other one's, like, she, like, does still dress the same, but she just seems really, like, fun and a lot more innocent, which I feel like this is one of those, like, I guess, I don't I don't know why I love it so much, exactly, but I just, like, this story of this innocent, like, like pony who like just had a couple of things happen like that ended up wrong and it's just kind of like these bad influences really like altered her life and or her life and it like it affected her negatively and it's an interesting thing that like having because you don't see as many like stories where things don't end up really like end up working out but i feel that for a story that like ended up being well kind of shitty not in writing but in just oh that like that sucks i think it was done really well that the outline on the mane and tail seems a little off for me i mean it, it, it's a little bit too thick in my opinion well i i i can i can see where you're coming from i don't i mean it's not i don't think it's meant to uh, i don't know i feel like it's it is technically the outline but I feel like it's just meant to accentuate that whole kind of more gothy style. I do think that if they're they're gonna have it like that, maybe make it a shade or two darker because it's just has this really like really dark contrast to really the rest of the pony because most of this pony is like honestly much brighter. Um. Overall, really love the OC. My only uh, problem is the cutie mark, just because it seems... I mean, it just seems like it's a little bit contrived to serve the purpose of the end of the story. I'm not sure (laughs) really what to do that would be able to allow the end of the story to turn out the way it did. But I feel... Because I like the fact that she also loves drawing and writing. I think that maybe having that be more of a part of her character would be cool. Having her have maybe these outlets for all the emotions that she's going through would be a nice way of, you know, helping the story and the character. Not sure what to do with the uh, ending part with that, though. Sorry. That's perfectly fine. Uh, Well, then, thank you for bringing that one to the party there, uh, Commander. Uh, Next OC is Smooth. Smooth, tell us about the OC you brought to the party this week. This is Monev. Um, notice that is just Venom backwards. Yeah. Um, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is actually part of her um, story, obviously, because you don't... Holy just... shit, it's Venom backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Many. Many. Please tell me you're joking. <laughs> he just said it. No, I, I just think that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Smooth. <laughs> uh Okay, um, she's a little shorter and a little lighter than average, um, mares. I'm not sure if that's average bat pony mares or average mares in general, because generally they're thought of to be different, however, it would make the most sense if they were the same. Yeah. But she herself is just a little bit shorter because... She is actually from, or well, I'm not sure if this is a because or not, but I'm going to go ahead and say it is because that makes sense in my mind. She is from uh, a thousand years ago when um, Discord was first defeated. 
uh, hmm. by Celestia and Luna. Cool. Also, this is an also this is an AU, so keep that in mind. Um, before Discord, uh, before Discord uh, kicked the can or um, turned the stone or whatever, um, petrified and, the daisies. Sure. Um, before. Before the whole plunder seeds thing, he apparently um, actually like poisoned the forest of wherever um, a colony of bat ponies was living. Um, McWolfity stated that she isn't a hundred percent sure if she's going to make that the Everfree Forest yet, but it's possible to give meaning to the Everfree Forest kind of thing. Um, that makes sense. But poisoned the forest, um, made it. Or filled it with dark magic, so anyone who lived in it or like ate fruit that was from the trees and stuff, pretty much filled with dark magic and was doomed to a painful death of badness. Um, so the leader of the village was like, "Oh, okay. Um, who's healthy and who isn't?" Uh, gathered a group that was healthy and freaking booked it out of there and left the ones who weren't healthy to die. Lame. Yep. Yep, he was a dick. Dick move. Um, uh, one of the um, mares from the village gave birth to a bat pony while she was dying. Um, it died from the birth, I believe, if I recall correctly from the backstory. And uh, that the pony that was born was Monev. Um, everyone else in the or that stayed in the forest was kind of on a very very short death clock. So they raised her um, as efficiently and quickly as they could, teaching her whatever they could, like, within the realm of possibility, before they friggin' died also. Um, So she was able to get some information before she was the last one standing. Um, But... She, for some reason, seemed more healthy than anyone else. Not just, not because like she was avoiding the poisoned food or anything, but she probably ate from that too, just like everyone else probably did. Kept doing because they were already poisoned to die. What the hell does it matter anymore? Kind of thing. Um, but she didn't show any signs of being impained or anything by it. Uh, eventually, she noticed she was actually immune to that venom because she was apparently born with the venom because her mother was poisoned during pregnancy or before pregnancy kind of thing. So she actually has the dark magic in her as a part of her. Uh, And eventually the food did start to run out, and the forest was, like, dying and stuff. So, you know, when everything's going to hell and everything's dying, uh, you look and see a dead tree... Well, anything can look like food at some point. So she bit the dead tree. And after a few minutes of trying to unst- uh, unstick her fangs from it, that was a terrible idea, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, she finally got out, and an apple fell on her head. <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me? Wait. So oh, what? hey, this tree isn't dead anymore. Excuse me. <laughs> what? Excuse me? So then she was like, hmm. Let's see, what changed from it being dead and it being alive? I bit it. Um, okay. Decided to do that with other trees and similar occurrences happened. Uh, with or without the apple falling on her head. I, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, didn't see that. Did she uh, have to unstick her fangs from the tree every time? Oh, most likely. Oh, okay. I, w- I want to hear uh, paragraphs of that happening. Yeah. <laughs> An apple falling on her head each time. <laughs> and uh, and she realized her cutie mark in her venom is actually able to heal plant life. So she became a gardener of this forest and watched over things. Uh, Personality-wise, she looks incredibly happy, but... That's really only when no one else is around kind of thing. If if you are in basically her forest kind of thing, she, she she she's not showing up. She's not showing herself to you. You won't see her kind of thing. She just, ugh. 
people. Ugh. Kind of like when uh, that um, village elder came back and was like, Oh, hey, look! A perfectly healthy little bat pony. You can join our tribe. And just a little bit and eventually noticed friggin' dark magic. And he was like, screw this. And the entire tribe left in the middle of the night and just left her there. Nice. See, now he's really a douchebag. Yep. Um, she doesn't trust very easily, and, uh, unfortunately her memories are also very fuzzy, and she has this time, time of, like, whatever time period it goes through, where she just kind of, like, starts forgetting things about her life. Hmm. Mm. Due to the dark magic. That is... That is very interesting. Also, if like you were in trouble near her, she probably wouldn't help you. Dick! She she just would not care. Fine, be that way then. And that's about it for backstory and personality. Cool. Uh it's just like I love how everything in it. I mean, I love the story behind it. It had a great uh sense of her trying to like fix the world, which those kind of uh, stories are really cool to me. I really like those kind of ideas. Even the fact that, like, the main kind of has this sickly green, but it totally works for Monev. And the fact that even on the sheet, they have, like, okay, big drop near the face, little drop near the butt. It's this, it works this way every time. And I'm just like, ah! So good! Yeah, I mean, like, because one thing that I critique with a lot of ponies is having, like, the, like, these, like, manes that don't really have any real direction to them. They're sort of just a little bit of a mess. This is a case where it really works. She doesn't, she's not really part of civilization. She doesn't like people. She's, like, barely can even speak and stuff. And she's oh, just. Also, also, it's specifically said that she does not brush her mane. And, nice. it's, and it specifically says she doesn't brush her mate, which makes sense, given the situation she's in. I think she's cute. I actually like your cutie mark because it's very simplified, and it it doesn't exactly get across her special talent, but it's enough there that I can make an assumption, and I like it. Because it doesn't handhold me with a cutie mark, and it's also not, oh, these drops, they re- they uh, they represent my, uh, sure, I'm a venomous, but I cry a lot type of personality. And I'm like, oh, thank God it's not a personality cutie mark. It's actually like a talent cutie mark. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I like... I, I want, it's really interesting, like, how this... This is, like, a very simple design, and then just due to the fact that the, she doesn't brush her mane, the mane is, like, ridiculous and all over, all over the place. But you could just probably draw the mane, like within certain bounds, really however you want. You don't have anything to follow, or don't have to have it follow a specific pattern just because it doesn't really matter. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Also, that, that like, what was, it, what, was he a chief of the village or whatever? He was the leader. The, just the leader? He, like, at first, he, I was like, like, okay, like, that's kind of a dick move, but it's like, Sometimes you like it's just one of those things where you got to make a, a tough decision. You got to do what you got to do, and then when and then he's a dick. He's just a dick. It's like, hey, this pony seems like they're fine and stuff. Oh, they, I, there's a little bit of dark magic. Blah 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 blah. We have to leave, and they just all abandon her. And I'm like, you guys suck. Because I mean, I don't know. It's just a really, it's a really interesting character. Because I, I mean, I've pro- they're probably have been a, a decent few characters that I can that have this kind of personality who I can think of with enough time but it's not a per, like a, a, a character model that you really see too often especially done this way and I think it, I think it's really fun I just imagine her sort of per, not, like both protecting the forest and helping it grow and just sort of like living her life just the way she wants it not having to worry about really other people, or other ponies, a little bit, a little bit carefree, even though she's not exactly as happy as she makes it seem sometimes. I really like her color palette. Yeah, she's incredibly cute. 
she is really cute. Just really quickly, I think that Mick Wolfie, I think if you could, like, just do a few different things with maybe some uh, different exp expressions that you think this pony would have and make a bigger reference sheet, because this pony is really cute, and I think you could do a lot with that. And, I don't know, I just like that idea. Well then, uh, looks like we're going to have to move on to our last good OC this week, and that's going to be Maddie's good OC. This is Moonshine, and uh, she's a bat pony who's afraid of the dark. <laughs> oh my god. Fuck me. Okay. <laughs> and uh, this has led her to... She has... she ha, Since she's a bat pony, she's nocturnal. But she has a terrible sleeping schedule. And so it makes... She's also, like, really tired because she doesn't like the dark. But she's sleeping in the day. But she doesn't want to sleep in the day because she wants to sleep at night so she can enjoy the light. But she can't seem to get that through her nocturnal s system. So she's just, like, really tired all the time. And she's raising a kid along with that. And, uh, she's, uh, her, her fear of the dark is, there's no real reason why she's scared. She's just scared of the dark. There's, a some, when she, uh, she has an ass blog that Carpet Shark started a little bit ago, and one person asked her why, and she didn't give a straight answer. She's just like, it's scary. Anything can be hiding in there. We can't see everything in the dark, so it's just scary. Can we just move on, please? I don't like the dark. Good so answer. she... I'm not sure if it's an errat. Does that count as irrational if you don't have a reason? Irrational? No. Yeah, it means you don't have a rational reason. So I guess it's an irrational fear of the dark, which is fine. That's most. It's a good most, character. Most fears of the dark are. Yeah, I find it yeah. fine, hard to justify. It's a good character flaw. I like it a lot. Uh, I also really like her color scheme. It's really cool. Is uh is a nice like basic bat design in her hair. Sure, it's really close to her coat, but it's different enough that I can see the difference. Okay. Uh, the one thing I really don't like about Moonshine is her cutie mark, honestly. I mean, I don't mind the cutie mark itself because it's nice and simple, and Carpet Shark is really good at that. It's just how she got it. Uh, she got lost one night, and uh, she used uh, the stars to get back home. And so it represents... But the cutie mark represents how the moon always ha shines light onto the world, no matter how dark it is, which... Yeah, it's a lovely statement, but that, what's the special talent there? Unless she's, like, really good at just reading the sky. Yeah, I think that, um, it, like, that would be a good, a good, like, like, talent to go along with that. Because, I mean, it's, it's hard to, I, I'm not exactly sure how to, because it just seems weird the fact, I mean, with, with her being afraid of the dark. But, I don't know. I think, I think it could be. It could be done really well. I mean, she still walks around with a nightlight, so that's adorable. And I, can I say that that's like a that's like a really interesting way of like doing like a shaming type of thing, like a, a adult bat pony walking around with a nightlight because she's scared of the dark. Like I know, I don't know what I can't think of like the term for it, but it's like really this character's just really well done, and I like it a lot. Like she didn't, she didn't make a lot of friends back when she was in high school or fucking pony school. However, the fuck pony schooling works. But uh, her hobbies are stargazing, chasing fireflies, and uh, dealing with her phobia. Trying to uh, make being scared of the dark not so scary. One of the things that helps with this is uh, her son. He's a he's just like a ball of joy and happiness, and I can't and I can't go through this character without without explain without talking about the son just a little bit because he's such a main part of her story, and like her son isn't a scare of the dark, and she and he's sort of helping his mom get through the scare the scariness of the dark. It's really adorable. Oh my god! That's I recommend awesome. everyone should go check out the Ask blog. It's really adorable, and the son's just really adorable. Everything Carpet Shark does is really adorable. I really love the color palette for uh, Moonshine. I I feel that the yellow is a bit bright and a bit of a, too much of a contrast, in my opinion. But other than that, I think the color palette is really awesome, like done really well. And I also like the uh, having having since the cutie mark is a bit obscured, having that little thing that like bubble that pops out to show the cutie mark. That's a really good idea. 
Yeah, that's that was really helpful. Yeah. I'm not sure if this is just a carpet shark thing or it's just for this OC or something. I really love the uh, little curls on parts of the mane. Yeah. Oh, like the, the out-of-place hairs? Yeah. Yes. I think that's because of how, like, how ba- how much sleep she doesn't get. I like, think she just has sweet. frizzy hair, tossing and turning, scared of the dark. It's just a nice, Constantly freaking out. just a nice little touch added to the character. It doesn't like it doesn't do too much, but like it can, it just like it gives that little bit of just yes yeah, to the design. And also like the addition of the bags under the eyes. Yeah, I didn't even notice those. Yeah, those were super cool. That's that's really well done. This is adorable. I want to I want to hug Moonshine. I want to help her get through the night. Ah, uh, Carver Shark, keep making blog posts about this pony. I love it. It's amazing. It's adorable. I'm gonna follow this forever. Nice. <laughs>